G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. Today we're going to have a look at the P51B Mustang. Just starting off, got the flaps control here, all the way down to 50 degrees, and on the outside, got the markings on the flaps themselves to double check. You've got your coolant radiator and your oil cooler controls, just leave those in automatic. Got a carburetor air control, all your trims, landing gear handle your bomb control handle and then coming up to the throttle quadrant on the bottom this red knob is going to be your mixture the idle cut off to shut the engine off auto lean for cruise and auto rich for all other ops propeller control for your RPM and then the throttle we've also got a boost control if you want some more power out of the engine it'll give you five minutes worth and there's your gun camera and bomb armament selection switches up top, this is the RAF Mark II site. Um, if you wanted, you can select the K14 gyro other than the standard default one. This is the landing gear warning light. This would come on if the throttle's below one third and the gear is not down and locked. And now for the main panel, you've got your carburetor air temperature, repeater indicator compass, the clock, suction gauge, manifold pressure, tachometer, the oil temperature with split oil and fuel pressure gauges and your coolant temperature. Now these other instruments that are outlined in white, this is your blind flying panel, so this is what you'll focus on for instrument flying. Uh, here you've got your airspeed indicator, magnetic compass, artificial horizon, altimeter, return and bank indicator, and then there's the vertical speed indicator. Now coming down, we've got a parking brake, your fuel booster switch, Supercharger with a high blower light, indicating when you're on the second stage. The starter switch, oil dilution switch, ignition switches, as well as some lighting rheostats. A fuel cock, fuel tank selector switch, and then your hydraulic pressure gauge. So up on the right hand side of the cockpit, there's an oxygen flow indicator, oxygen regulator, the oxygen pressure gauge, a fuel primer, and on the right side there, that's your recognition lights. Now underneath that, got an electrical box here, showing your batteries, generator, uh, pitot heat, as well as the exterior lighting and an ammeter. Also have the radio there as well and some placards. Now on the floor, it's a little bit harder to see, there's gonna be your fuel gauges and defrosters. So see we have left and right wing tanks and then if I kind of maneuver behind me, here we can see, if I can zoom in, that's gonna be your fuselage tank. So when that's full, you're kind of limited in your aerobatic maneuvers, um, but once you get below 75% total fuel, that's when you're able to um, maneuver freely. So we're starting the P51, it's gonna increase the propeller to maximum at about an inch on the throttle. Then you press E, and this will start the automatic process to get the engine started. Now as the starter engages, and the engine turns over, once it starts firing, that's when you bring the mixture to the order rich position, and that'll complete the engine start for the P51, so now you can have a look at the pilot's notes. Since the flaps will be in the up position when you get in the airplane, after you start the engine, the flaps are going to start retracting automatically. So that's the noise that we're hearing there. Now let's say if you were in a cold airplane and you needed to warm up the engine, in that case you'd want to set the RPM to about 1300, which you would get um, by increasing the throttle. And then once you reach the desired temperatures for a warmer engine, um, then you can just continue taxiing. But the engine's already warm, so once the flaps are attracted, we'll be good to go. Alright, the flaps are attracted. So to 
lock the tailwheel. We pull back on the stick for straight line taxiing. And if you need to make a turn, you'll push forward of neutral. And this will disengage the tailwheel lock to let you make turns a little bit tighter. So we're going to disengage the parking brake by tapping the toe brakes. And we'll increase the throttle a little bit now. And start the taxiing process. I'm going to make a left turn here. So you can use left rudder with some left brake if you want. And we're going to push that stick a little bit forward in neutral to facilitate the turn, make it a little bit easier on yourself. And then once you hit the straight line, just pull the stick after neutral to engage the tailwheel lock. For taking off from the P51B, the canopy is going to remain open initially. The flaps will be up or at 20 degrees if you had a full fuselage tank and you're at a grass field. The coolant and oil controls are staying automatic and the rudder trim will be at 5 degrees right. The elevator trim it will depend on the circumstance. If the fuselage tank is full, it will start off at 0 degrees. If it's empty though, it will have 5 degrees up. And if you're using flaps, you get at an extra 3 degrees up depending on um, the state of the fuselage tank. The propeller is going to be at maximum, mixture should be auto rich, and the supercharger will stay in automatic. So really I don't have to prepare too much. I'm going to go with the flaps up takeoff. So all I'm going to have to do here is set the trim to 5 degrees right and make sure that elevator trim is back at neutral. So after I get onto the runway here, I'm going to increase the throttle. I'm going to bring it up to 46 inches and you hold that stick after neutral. That way the table stays locked and we'll take off in a tail low position or a three point attitude. So use rudder as needed to stay straight. And you've got lift off, get the landing gear up, get yourself accelerating to about 150 miles per hour. This you should avoid climbing until you reach that speed. And you'll climb out, best speed is going to be 160 miles per hour all the way up to 30,000 feet. Now if you're using flaps on the takeoff, uh, you want to retract them once you clear of obstacles and above 500 feet. So it's continuing the climb here. I'm going to bring the power back a little bit. It's only going to stay in the traffic pattern, so don't really need full climb power. Then we get the canopy closed, and uh, we'll have a look at how to land the P-51B. So for landing in the P-51B on downwind, set the flaps to 20 degrees if you like. This will help slow the airplane down to get yourself below 170 miles an hour at which point you can open the canopy and extend the landing gear make sure you can put to auto rich and propeller to maximum and now for the base to final turn your airspeed should be below 165 miles per hour this will let you extend the flaps all the way out to full and then for your approach speed you can go for about 120 miles an hour if you like and that works pretty well but if you're landing with a full fuselage tank Generally, you want to avoid that final turn below 140 miles an hour. So here we are in downwind. I'm going to start slowing down. Get the flaps out to 20. It's going to increase that drag. And also cause a nose pitching down. So you're going to have to add some nose up trim to maintain your altitude. As you pull the throttle back, it starts slowing down to 170. Get the gear down and the counter be open. Checking the distance to the runway looks pretty good. And we get below 165, get the flaps all the way out to full, and we'll start that base to final turn. Nose is going to want to pitch down, so you'll use more uh, nose up trim. Get the propeller to maximum now. Let me just adjust the base to final turn accordingly based on our aiming point at the beginning of the runway. Now you can wait to extend the flaps if you like. Um, however, it's going to be on short final and uh, should be above 400 feet if you're going to do it that way. See, so we're just adjusting the bank angle accordingly so we can get our aiming point where we want it to be. And to start approaching the runway threshold, we can start pulling the power back pretty close to idle and bring it up into a three-point attitude and hold it off 
Keep holding that back pressure in there until we touch down. Hold the stick all the way back to engage the tailwheel lock and start applying the brakes. And you can use directional braking with the rudder in order to stay straight on the runway or regain the center line at the least. You don't want to be using full braking at the high speeds um, as you'll be at risk of causing a prop strike by lowering the nose. But then once we get to a slow enough taxi speed, we can retract the flaps and then taxi for the shutdown. And that will complete this tutorial for the P51B.